Hello and welcome to Andre Knows Everything. I'm Andre. This is the show where we learn things one topic at a time using the power of the internet in about an hour. So we're not going to learn everything about it. Um, today, I thought I'd like to talk about um, a substance, uh, a very powerful substance, one that has taken over the world entirely. Um, today, we're talking about coffee. Okay, And the reason that we're talking about coffee is because... Uh, I recently started drinking more coffee than I than I used to. Um, I used to be more of like a tea guy, or I would try to stay off caffeine entirely. Um, but it's it's kind of taken over my life uh, recently um, because I had a schedule change at my work, so I had to start waking up a lot earlier than uh, than I was used to, and and staying later at at work. So uh, I needed more energy throughout my day, so I started drinking more coffee. And uh, this past week. I didn't drink any coffee because I was running late and I kept forgetting to, to make it and stuff like that. And I started suffering um, some pretty massive headaches. So <laughs> I was uh, pretty much directly contributing that to uh, coffee usage. So today we're going to look through the Internet and um, figure out why that happened to me and figure out why so many people love coffee so much. Um, I have a cup right here in my um, uh, Avengers mug. Uh because I'm nine, all right? There's a lot of nerdy stuff going on in this shot right now. There's an Avengers mug, a Gryffindor shirt, and a Star Wars uh, blanket behind me. Ah, the yummy slurps of bean juice. All right, you guys, let's get into it. Let's learn about coffee. Okay, so as as I always do, I pulled up uh, several links here. Um, we'll start with a short history lesson on coffee, and then we'll get into some uh, statistics, side effects, uh, negative effects, good effects, all the effects of coffee. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to try to get through this entire cup uh, throughout the show. Some people some people drink so much coffee. I bet in an hour-long podcast they could have like four or five mugs of coffee. Is it mugs of coffee? Cups of coffee? Cups of coffee. Should I keep slurping directly into the mic, or maybe should I pull away? You still heard it. All right. <clears throat> Let's get into it, y'all. Coffee dates back to around the 15th century, and possibly earlier, with a number of reports and legends surrounding its first use. The earliest substantiated evidence of either coffee drinking or knowledge of the coffee tree is from the early 15th century in the Sufi monasteries of Yemen, spreading soon to Mecca and Cairo, by the 16th century, it had reached the Middle East, South India, Persia, Turkey, the Horn of Africa, and Northern Africa. Coffee then spread to the Balkans, Italy, and to the rest of Europe, as well as Southeast Asia, and then finally to, <laughs> finally, this is the last place coffee ever made it to, America. Uh, despite bans imposed during the 15th century by religious leaders in Mecca and Cairo, and later by the Catholic Church. Interesting. Coffee is African. Hmm. I don't tell you that at Starbucks, okay? You know, when you walk in, they don't they don't tell you. Uh, the word coffee entered the English language in 1582 with the Dutch coffee, um, borrowed from the Ottoman Turkish kave, in turn borrowed from the Arabic kawa. Um, the Arabic word kawa, I'm definitely not pronouncing that right. I'm sorry if you speak Arabic. Um, the Arabic word kawa <laughs> originally referred to a type of wine whose etymology is given to Arab lexicographers as deriving from the verb kaha to lack hunger, in reference to the drink's reputation as an appetite suppressant. The word kawa is sometimes alternatively traced to the Arabic kuwa, uh, which means power or energy, or to kafa, a medieval kingdom in Ethiopia, whence the plant was exported to Arabia. These etymologies for kawa have all been disputed. However, the name kawa is not used for the berry or plant, um, which is the products of the region, which are known in Arabic as bun and Somali and Oromo as boon. All right, I'm gonna stop mispronouncing words. Let's let's uh, let's move on a little bit. Um, there are several legendary accounts of the origin of the drink itself. One account involves the Moroccan Sufi mystic Ghafal Akbar Nuruddin Abu Al Hasan Al Shadili. Okay. I want you all to be as impressed with that pronunciation as I just was. When traveling in Ethiopia, the legend goes, he observed birds of unusual vitality feeding on berries, and upon trying the berries, experienced the same vitality. 
Other accounts attribute this discovery of coffee to Sheikh Abu al Hassan al Ash Shadili's pr- disciple, Omar, uh, who has a much easier name. <laughs> My name is Sheikh Abu al Hassan Ash Shadili, and this is my buddy Omar. Um, according to the Ancient Chronicle, Omar, who is known for his ability to cure the sick through prayer, was once exiled from Mecca to a desert cave near Usab. Starving, Omar chewed berries from nearby shrubbery, but found them to be bitter. Yeah, this shit is gross. Uh, He tried roasting the beans to improve the flavor, but they became hard. He then tried boiling them to soften the bean, which resulted in a fragrant brown liquid. Upon drinking the liquid, Omar was revitalized and sustained for days. As stories of this miracle drug reached Mecca, Omar was asked to return and was made a saint. Homie discovered coffee and became a saint. That's, uh, that's very interesting. Okay. So I got I got the basic origin story, or at least one version of the of the origin story. Let's move on from there. So let's see what the health benefits of coffee are, because you know as I grew up, uh, my mom drank coffee a lot, my dad drinks coffee. Um, I I always tried to stay away from it because I had heard a fair amount of bad things, which you know people tell you as a kid to keep you from drinking it because it can it can do some bad things i heard that it stunts your growth i heard that you become dependent upon it it's addictive um and that you got to put in a bunch of sugar to make it taste good which i know for a fact to be true there is about uh uh, uh, like four or five packets of sugar in this sucker right now in my opinion and feel free to disagree with me coffee is gross it's really disgusting it's um it's bean juice from that from that dark uh, brown berry, and uh, it's it's black, and it's nasty, and it's bitter, and it's hard to get through. Which is why I put so many um, extra things in here. Can you can you guys see this? See how light that is. I put a bunch of milk, a bunch of cream, a bunch of sugar up in this sucker, and it still isn't my favorite drink in the world, you know. <laughs> but I don't drink it for its taste. I drink it for its effects. Let's see what these effects are. Um, here are five benefits of drinking coffee. Okay. Coffee and diabetes. Uh-oh. You're going to tell me that all the sugar I'm putting in here is going to give me diabetes? Coffee may help protect against type 2 diabetes. In 2014, researchers who gathered data on over 48,000 people found that those who increased their coffee consumption by at least one cup per day over four years had an 11% 11 11 lower risk of type 2 diabetes than those who do not increase their intake a meta-analysis from 2017 concluded that people who drink four to six cups of either caffeinated or decaffeinated coffee each day appear to have a lower risk of metabolic syndrome including type 2 diabetes that's pretty interesting um and i wonder let's see did that say anything about it having to be black coffee uh, no, it didn't. So you know, sugar it up, baby, <laughs> and it still may protect you from type two diabetes. That 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 right there will will keep me drinking coffee for a few more years. You know, whereas because I was having headaches earlier this week, I was like, I'm about to quit this shit forever. But but now that I know that it can stave off type two diabetes, which I'm I'm not necessarily completely at risk for, but I'm a black dude who drinks a lot of Kool Aid and and puts a lot of sugar in everything that I that I use and salt too. Um so, you know, it, it it might happen. So, but if if coffee will will help prevent that, then I will uh I'll keep drinking this. Coffee and Parkinson's disease. Various studies have shown that caffeine, which is present in coffee and many other beverages, may help protect Parkinson's disease. One team concluded that men who drink over 4 cups of coffee per day might have a five-fold lower risk of Parkinson's than those who do not. In addition, the caffeine in coffee may help control movement in people with Parkinson's, according to one 2012 study. The findings of a 2017 meta-analysis suggested a link between the coffee consumption and a lower risk of Parkinson's disease, even among people who smoke. This team also found that people who drink coffee may be less likely to experience depression and cognitive conditions such as Alzheimer's. Now, I know I haven't been drinking enough coffee because I got depression out the wazoo, baby, okay? I'm a depressed all the way up to my eyeballs, all right? There's a lot of it in here. And, and apparently, maybe if I had started drinking coffee earlier as a younger man, then uh, maybe I wouldn't be quite as depressed. Is it depressing to tell people that you're depressed? I, I kind of take it in stride, you know? 
I'm 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 a fun funny guy. I'm always smiling, and uh, deep in my brain there are chemical imbalances happening all the time. Ah, what fun! All right, there was not enough evidence to prove that drinking decaffeinated coffee would help prevent Parkinson's disease. However, oh, I I gotta let me let me go ahead and create a new tab right now because I gotta I gotta know about decaf coffee and why people drink that horrible nonsense. Um. Okay, but let's go back. I keep going. Let's see. Coffee and liver cancer. Italian researchers found that coffee consumption lowers the risk of liver cancer by around 40%. Some of the results suggest that people who drink three cups per day might have a 50% lower risk. Uh, also, a 2019 literature review concluded that coffee intake probably reduced the risk of liver cancer. Hmm. And then there are other liver diseases that coffee prevents against. Um... A meta-analysis from 2017 concluded that consuming any type of coffee appeared to reduce the risk of liver cancer, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and cirrhosis. People who consume coffee may also have a lower risk of gallstone disease. Oh, that's nice. I don't want no gallstones. In 2014, researchers looked at coffee consumption among people with primary sclerosing cholangitis, sclerosing cholangitis, and Primary biliary cirrhosis. Y'all see I'm pronouncing these words? Okay, I'm smart as shit. Uh, These are autoimmune conditions that affect the bile ducts in the liver. They found that people with PSC were more likely to have a lower coffee intake than those without the condition. There was also no evidence to suggest that coffee intake was different among people with or without PBC. Okay. I know I just read all of that, but I'm, I'm going to move on as if I understood it. Um, also, one 2014 study suggested a link between coffee consumption and a lower risk of dying from non-viral hepatitis-related cirrhosis. The researchers suggested that drinking two or more cups of coffee every day might reduce the risk by 66%. Now, so they're telling me all of these benefits, supposed benefits, but they aren't telling me, like, why? What, what is coffee doing to my body that it's preventing my liver from getting jacked up? It's preventing me from getting type 2 diabetes? What what and preventing me from getting Parkinson's? What is it doing? Tell me, medicalnewstoday.com. All right, and the last one. <laughs> also, I kind of want to track how t- fast I'm talking as I go through this episode and drink more coffee because it feels like I'm already at a uh, superbly quick speaking rate. Maybe I'll do a sip counter too. Coffee and heart health. One 2012 study concluded that drinking coffee in moderation or consuming around two 8-ounce servings per day may protect against heart failure. People who drank moderate amounts of coffee each day had an 11% lower risk of heart failure than those who did not. One 2017 meta-analysis found that caffeine consumption may have at least a small benefit for cardiovascular health, including blood pressure. Some studies, however, found higher levels of blood lipids and cholesterol in people who consumed more coffee. Um, I wear an Apple Watch, and I have anxiety, so I check my heart rate uh, frequently throughout the day. Um, Although I don't believe I've checked it at all all today. Um, Right now, I'm sitting at a a current heart rate of 68 beats per minute. Uh, Maybe I'll throw that up on the screen um, just to show you. And maybe as time goes on and I start to feel my heart up pumping faster, as it normally does when I drink coffee, um, then we can get into that. But once again, it's not really saying why, like what coffee is doing to help me um, with my with with my body. Um, and then, then there's some nutritional stuff. OK. OK, so let's jump over to WebMD and see what they have to say. Um, about the effects of coffee because maybe they could tell me a little bit more about how it's actually affecting my body and preventing all these super fun diseases like Parkinson's. Um, if only Michael J. Fox had drank more coffee. <laughs> uh, okay. Coffee. All right. It's a drink made from coffee beans, which are the roasted fruit of the coffee Arabica bush. So I keep calling them I keep calling it bean juice, but it's actually fruit juice. This is uh, just the most disgusting fruit juice in existence, and probably the most popular one as well. After I look up um, its effects, I will be jumping into some stats about how many people in the world currently drink coffee. And uh, spoiler alert, it's a lot. Okay, but 
Let's see here. People most commonly drink coffee to relieve mental and physical fatigue and to increase mental alertness. I'm so fucking alert right now. Coffee is used to prevent Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, and cognitive decline. It's also used to prevent gallstones, gout, type 2 diabetes, and certain types of cancer. Rectally, oh, <clears throat> coffee is used as an enema to treat cancer. Coffee enemas are used as part of the Gerson therapy. In the Gerson therapy, cancer patients are treated with caffeinated coffee in the form of enemas every four hours on a daily basis. What? For real? Who thought Who thought of this? <laughs> Gerson, the Gerson therapy. Uh, Gerson was a freak. Okay, I don't, I, you know, I don't know what his medical practices were or anything like that, but I can tell you for sure. He was like, what if we just put it up our asses? I bet it would be so much better if we put it up our asses. Let's do it. Let's try it. And then he's like, we got to do that multiple times a day. <laughs> um, okay, let's keep reading. In the Gerson therapy, cancer patients are treated with caffeinated coffee in the form of enemas every four hours on a daily basis. During the treatment, people are given a diet of liver, vegetables, and a variety of other supplements. This type of therapy is considered an unacceptable medical practice in the U.S. Okay, cool. I'm glad that I was right about uh, how freaking gross that was. Um, okay, how does it work? Here's what I came here for. Coffee contains caffeine. Caffeine works by stimulating the central nervous system, heart, and muscles. Coffee also contains other chemicals that might have other benefits. Okay. I um, guess we're going to move on to uses. No. What, let's look at interactions. Show me. Oh. Oh, this is how coffee interacts with other with other drugs in your system. Mm, dosing. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> dosing. The following does not have, does not, doses have been studied in scientific research. Dosing by mouth. Uh, the most normal way to drink coffee. Uh, you can get do it for a headache or improving mental alertness. Okay, the typical dose of caffeine is up to 250 milligrams per day. So the other day when I was at work, and I was having a huge headache and I didn't have any coffee on hand. I went and got a soda from the uh, vending machine. I looked at the back of it. It was a cherry Coke. And I think it was 34 milligrams per, you know, a 12 ounce can or whatever. They're saying the typical dose of caffeine is up to 250 milligrams per day, which is about two cups of coffee, which suggests that this is, what, 125 milligrams of coffee? <sighs> of caffeine, excuse me. Even a single cup of coffee with caffeine can be used. That's for headache or improving your mental alertness, which once again, alert as shit right now. Um, for Parkinson's disease, you drink three to four cups of caffeinated coffee per day or 421 milligrams, um, 421 to 2,716 milligrams of total caffeine. However, a significantly lower risk of developing Parkinson's disease has also been associated with as little as 124 to 208 milligrams of caffeine approximately one to two cups of coffee. In women, more moderate caffeinated coffee intake, one to three cups a day, seems to be best. Okay. Now, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Oh, okay. We're taking it by mouth. Okay, we're taking it for headaches, mental alertness, and for Parkinson's disease. And the next one says, for death from any cause. What are you talking about? At least one cup of ground, instant, or decaffeinated coffee per day has been used long term. To prevent death? What? Hang on. <laughs> Am I reading this wrong? Am I stupid? This is for dosing, okay? The following doses have been studied in scientific research. By mouth, we take it for headaches, we take it for Parkinson's, and we take it for death from any cause. <laughs> Just drink a cup of coffee, and it can help prevent your death. Even decaf. Even decaf can help you prevent your death. Isn't that... Incredible? What the fuck is this WebMD article talking about? Anyway, okay, let's let's move on. Um, I don't know why they put that in with very little explanation. Let's keep going. Uh, you can take it for gallbladder disease, uh, 400 milligrams or more. You can take it for high cholesterol, six to eight cups of caffeinated coffee per day if you have high cholesterol. Yikes, that seems like a lot. Now, once again, for me, I'm a, I'm a pretty lightweight with everything that I consume. In terms of, of substances and 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 uh, myself abusing them, but I'm I'm a pretty lightweight, so alcohol takes me out pretty quick. You know, I, I have a drink and I'm 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 done. And coffee is a similar way. I drink one cup 
and my heart rate is uh up and Adam Adam Ant. Okay, let's take another screenshot. All right. Um uh you could take it for diabetes, you could take nine hundred milligrams of caffeine, okay? And you could take it for impaired movement of food through the intestines after surgery. A hundred milliliters of coffee three times a day, starting after surgery and continuing until the first bowel movement has been used. Okay, so that's another thing that we should get into, and maybe uh, maybe I'll go up to um, to side effects, and uh, and get some more explanation. But the main the main reason that I didn't drink coffee for a long time, and still am hesitant to drink it today, is because it completely fucks up my intestines. I am a shit monster when I drink this drink. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to hold out for the entirety of this episode. But I promise you that within an hour from now, maybe even 45 minutes from now, I will be on the toilet. This stuff is like Drano. It goes right through me and comes right on out in the most explosive way possible. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys are super into poop talk, but um, I am. And <laughs> and coffee is uh, basically my poop shoot. OK, this thing gets it out of me no matter what i don't think there uh, that a day has gone by that a sip has passed through these lips without it r completely wrecking everything going on in here you know if i've ever been plugged up a cup of coffee will uh do me good and when i'm not plugged up a cup of coffee will will jack me up you know takes me out sometimes okay i do stand-up comedy right and i travel for it so sometimes i'll go do a full day of work come home and I'm tired, but I have a show that night that I have to leave for because I have to get on the road. And uh, I'll drink some coffee so that I can that I can make it, so I can perk myself up. And, you know, when I'm taking these hour and a half to three hour long car rides, I got to stop because the coffee is running through my system. I got coffee cranking through my sis. Got coffee cranking through my sis. Uh, that's a shout out to Chelsea Peretti, who also loves coffee. Side effects and safety. Okay, Coffee is likely safe for most healthy adults when consumed in moderate amounts, about four cups per day. Coffee containing caffeine can cause insomnia, nervousness, restlessness, stomach upset, nausea, and vomiting. That stomach upset is me. Um, increased heart and breathing rate and other side effects. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm starting to get sweaty. And I don't know if that's because I'm talking fast or because I'm just drinking coffee or if it's a combination of the two, which is, is probably probably that. Drinking unfiltered coffee can increase total cholesterol, low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, and levels of another type of blood fat called triglycerides. This might increase the risk of developing heart disease. Drinking unfiltered coffee can increase your total cholesterol. Okay. Using coffee filters helps to reduce these effects on cholesterol. Right, because it said that you could use it to fight high cholesterol. And it was like an amazing amount. It was like six to eight cups. Isn't that what it said? Okay, here we go. Let's see. That was said. That, that was all under likely safe. <laughs> Caffeinated coffee is possibly unsafe when taken by mouth for a long time or in high doses, like more than four cups a day. Drinking large amounts of caffeinated coffee might cause Headache, anxiety, agitation, ringing in the ears. That's fun. Irregular heartbeats. Drinking more than six cups daily might also cause caffeinism with symptoms such as anxiety or agitation. <laughs> also, people who drink a lot of caffeinated coffee every day may need to drink more coffee to get the same effects, right? You 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 build up a tolerance and then you gotta you gotta start taking in more. It's like heroin, basically. You know, it's almost exactly the same. You 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 tie off <laughs> once and then you're like i gotta get more of that and then you gotta start tying off three or four times a day just to feel the same hit that you did before i've never done heroin i, I don't do heroin i don't plan to do heroin don't do heroin um god i'm talking so fast let's slow it down i'm not gonna edit that out all right here we go <clears throat> um they also may become dependent on coffee to the point that they develop withdrawal symptoms if they suddenly stop drinking it. So this is kind of what I think happened to me earlier this week when I started having headaches um, because, you know, I went like Monday through Thursday without drinking any coffee. And on Thursday, I was like, what is wrong with my body? And it turns out it was it was a lack of, of caffeine, which I apparently had become dependent upon over the last month of drinking coffee every day. 
And still, I'm only drinking one eight ounce serving of coffee. And it's still making my brain go like, bro, get that in here now, right now. I'm only about 75% of the way through this particular cup. And I'm getting hot. The bubble guts are, are, are starting to rumble. You know, it's, it's about to be a, a, a volcano eruption uh, in here. <clears throat> but let's keep going. There is some concern that drinking more than five cups of coffee per day might not be safe for people with heart disease. But for people who don't have heart disease, drinking several cups daily does not seem to increase the chance of developing a heart problem. There is also concern that occasional coffee drinking might trigger a heart attack in some people. Hold up, what? There is also a concern that occasional coffee drinking might trigger a heart attack in some people. Okay, that. That sentence is very concerning to me because, um, yeah, before my schedule change at work, I, I was basically an occasional coffee drinker. I would drink tea most of the time and coffee every once in a while. And every time I drink coffee, my heart rate goes up a gajillion points and I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. So it, this WebMD article telling me that I might have a heart attack is probably going to cause me to have a heart attack. We'll see. <clears throat> People who usually don't drink more than one cup of coffee daily and also have multiple risk factors for heart disease seem to have an increased, increased risk for heart attack within an hour after drinking coffee. But people who regularly drink greater amounts do not seem to have this risk. That's interesting. And it, it almost makes me wonder if I should have stuck to my guns when I was younger and been like, no coffee for me. You know, this is not my drug. This is not my drink. Um, but eventually it, it, it encroached itself into my life and, and here I am drinking it up and uh, feeling the effects. There is some concern that drinking coffee might increase the risk of some types of cancers. However, there is no good evidence that coffee increases the risk of any type of cancer. Scientists continue to look at this. Okay. Coffee is also possibly unsafe when <laughs> given rectally as an enema. Yeah, I, no shit. <laughs> yeah, if anyone had ever suggested to me, hey, okay, I know how to fix your problems. We're going to shove coffee up your butt several times and it's going to help you out. I would be like, nah, nah, bro. Not me. Coffee enemas have been linked to cases of severe side effects, including death. I, I, you know, I don't know if I'd call death a side effect. I think that's a major effect. If if you drink something and it causes you to die, that's the only effect that matters uh, for that particular drink. Um, so coffee is possibly unsafe for pregnant women. All right, in amounts of three cups per day or less. Now I, it's kind of hard. I don't I don't think I think about this too often, but I feel like when most people get pregnant, they they're supposed to stop drinking coffee. Stop drinking tea, stop drinking alcohol, obviously. Um, stop doing any kind of drugs, all that kind of stuff. But let's see what this says. Um, this amount, three cups per day, this amount of coffee provides around 300 milligrams of caffeine. Consuming larger amounts during pregnancy or when breastfeeding is possibly unsafe. Drinking more than three cups per day during pregnancy has been linked to an increase of miscarriage, premature birth, and low birth weight. These risks increase as the amount of coffee the mother drinks during pregnancy increases. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, caffeine can pass into breast milk, so nursing mothers should closely monitor caffeine intake to make sure it is on the low side, like one to two cups per day. High intake of caffeine by nursing mothers can cause sleep problems, irritability, and increased bowel activity in breastfed infants. Goodness. You, you want your baby to be up even more than it is now? Okay? Stop it. Uh, pregnant uh, ladies. Children. Okay, so this is this is the, the stuff that I was hearing when I was a kid. All right. Caffeinated coffee is possibly unsafe when taken by children and adolescents in amounts of commonly found in foods and beverages. So when you're a kid, they tell you, don't drink coffee. It'll stunt your growth. Um, your your uh, and, you know, when I was a kid, I thought that meant purely that I'm like I'm not going to get tall. Uh, -uh. I want to be tall. Um, but I think I think it's more like your brain isn't fully developed yet as a child. So. And I'll, I'll read this, but but uh, so when you're drinking coffee and it's acting as a stimulant and it's making your brain all crazy and your heart go go nuts, um, it can definitely cause a child to have their growth stunted in that they're not growing at the 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 level that they're supposed to um, in terms of their their age and stuff like that. Let's see. <clears throat> 
anxiety disorders. The caffeine in coffee might make anxiety worse. Uh huh. Uh, bipolar disorder. The caffeine in coffee might make symptoms of mania worse. That sucks. If you have bipolar disorder and you're already feeling crazy um, a lot of the time, and you start drinking coffee and it makes you even more crazy. It's not the drink for you. Bleeding disorders. There is some concern that coffee might make bleeding disorders worse. Okay. Like anemia? So actually, that's, that's, that's lack of bleeding. Hypo, never mind. Hypo anemia? I'm going to stop making shit up. Heart disease. Okay, here we go. Drinking unfiltered coffee increases the amount of cholesterol and other fats in the blood and also raises the level of homocysteine, all of which are associated with an increased risk of developing heart disease. Some research suggests an association between heart attacks and drinking coffee. Now, that says unfiltered coffee, which I don't think, well, okay, I was about to say I don't think anybody does drink unfiltered coffee, but that's definitely not true. I watched an episode of, um, what's it called? Uh, it's on Disney Plus. It's Jeff Goldblum's show. Uh, the one, the World According to Jeff Goldblum, I think is what it's called. And he has a coffee episode on there. And he says that he's like, um, he he stops drinking coffee because it was it was causing him problems. Um, and so for this for that episode, he went to like a cowboy coffee maker or whatever. Um, I'm just looking up the the episode so you can have a, a visual a visual while I talk about it. Um, and the the cowboy coffee guy was talking about um how his process for making coffee. And so he take he he like makes the beans and he puts it in a thing and then that thing gets real hot and puts it into the into a liquid form and and they drink it and I think that technically would be unfiltered coffee and that's like their favorite way to drink it that's like the only way to drink real coffee or or whatever the fuck they they like that that nasty as bitter bean juice um, that I that I am not a fan of <clears throat> yeah so let me just see yeah here we go can I play this fifteen second clip. And not get thrown off of you. They call it an art. Holy cats. What did I just do? Show our friends a science and certainly an obsession. We're going to load you up today, okay? Okay. Copy, copy, copy. So that's that. I saw. I showed you an ad um, <laughs> for coffee. Um, so, yeah. So I think I think unfiltered coffee is the way that 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 is is being made. Um, and that's what causes the high cholesterol and the, the, the fat to stay in, in your body while it's being made. Here's a, here's a cowboy, and here's his, his coffee rig here on the side. Anyway, let's, let's move on. Um, so I'm still on WebMD. Um, man, it has a lot of things that it, that it can do. This is still under effects, side effects. What am I looking at? Yeah, side effects. I'm all over the place on this episode. I, uh, um, thinning bones, irritable bowel syndrome. Here we go. Let me read this one. <clears throat> coffee contains caffeine. The caffeine in coffee, especially when taken in large amounts, can worsen diarrhea and might worsen symptoms of IBS. Uh-huh. In, indeed. In, indubitably. In, do do indubitably. Okay, <clears throat> so let's move on from WebMD because basically all they're doing is is putting fear into my heart. Let's jump over to some statistics, all right? Because coffee is one of the most popular drinks on earth, and it's drank all o all over the the the, the world. So let's see. Um, let's see how much of it is is being drunk as of twenty twenty. Specialty coffee sales are increasing by 20% per year and account for nearly 8% of the $18 billion U.S. coffee market. $18 billion just for coffee in the U.S. Coffee statistics show that among coffee drinkers, the average consumption in the United States is three cups of coffee per day. That's average. Is that it? Is that? Okay, okay, good. Coffee consumption. How many cups of coffee are consumed daily in the U.S.? Oh, this is from eimports.com. Um, coffee shop business startup solution. So they're they're a coffee company. Okay. Coffee statistics. 
50% of the population, equivalent to 150 million Americans, drink espresso, cappuccino, latte, or iced and cold coffees. Coffee shop facts. Independent coffee shops equal $12 billion in annual sales. Hmm. Maybe I should get into the coffee game. I should get out of the podcasting game and into the coffee game. Um, at the present, there are approximately 24,000 coffee shops around the crunchy country. Statistics show there will be approximately 50,000 plus coffee shops within the years to follow. The average espresso drive through business sells approximately 200 to 300 cups of espresso and coffee baked drinks per day. I mean, there are there are all kinds of coffee places out there. You know, you got from from the top to the bottom. There's there's Starbucks, there's Pete's, there's Joe's, there's diners. There uh, uh, coffee is almost everywhere. I don't think that there's a restaurant that you could go to in America that like doesn't serve coffee. I think I think we've well, they've all got it. And this is just talking about coffee shops in particular. They have coffee shops where girls in in uh in lingerie give you coffee just cuz let's mix everything together, you know? Let's let's put the good with the good. You know what I'm saying? Although those those particular shops are um I think kind of dangerous for for those girls. That's a whole nother episode. Anyway, let's keep going with these uh, statistics. I'm going to let you know right now that I'm 38 minutes into this recording and my stomach is going nuts. And uh, there may be some audible toots here in a moment and I might have to pause and come back. <clears throat> the National Coffee Association and the Specialty Coffee Association of America conduct annual regarding coffee consumption each year. The gathered data provided in the chart to the left can be extremely beneficial to anyone wishing to start a business or just have an insight on coffee consumption. Okay, so interestingly, coffee consumption, 2,000 kilograms per person. So Finland is out here killing it in the coffee game. They're drinking almost, is that 10,000 kilograms per person of coffee? Wow. Is that per year? Is that what that said? Finland, Sweden, Switzerland, Germany, <clears throat> France, Italy, Brazil, all above the United States in coffee consumption. That's very interesting. Japan is out here drinking coffee. They're right below us, and Britain right under them. Um, what percentage of people drink coffee? So they said 50% earlier. Over 50% of Americans over 18 years of age drink coffee every day. This represents over 150 million daily drinkers. 30 million American adults drink specialty coffee, coffee beverages daily, which include a mocha, a latte, espresso, cafe mocha, cappuccino, or frozen or iced coffee beverages. Um, we're spending a lot on it, too. The average price for an espresso is about three forty-five. Um shops miscellaneous okay do, 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 do. now i'm on a website called myfriendscoffee.com um they did a bunch of research on statistics about coffee that that other website was much more geared toward coffee shops and and the business of coffee i kind of want to get into um some different types of statistics statistics here i can't talk anymore because i literally have to go take a shit and I think I'm going to stop the recording and go do that and then come back and resume um, because I, pff, holy moly, it, it, it's it's happening. I didn't finish this cup. And uh, like I said, it is it is flowing through me. It is on the precipice. I'm going to kill the cup and then I'm going to go. Sweet baby Jesus. Yeah, I got it. I got to leave. I got it. I can't. I can't keep recording. <clears throat> I'll be back though. Six explosive minutes later. Okay, I'm uh, back. Ah, holy crap! I I guess one could say. Um, holy moly! All right, should I drink another cup of coffee? I think you'd be disappointed if I didn't, right? Okay, I'm going to get up again. I'm going to make another cup of coffee, and I'll be back. We'll read some more statistics. We'll uh, go over coffee versus tea, and then um, and then we'll maybe close it out 
with uh, how addictive coffee is. Okay, let me go make some. Let me go make another cup. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please subscribe to the channel. I'm putting my body through um, all kinds of ridiculous things to help entertain you and educate you. And uh, oh boy, my uh, <laughs> my heart is a racing. Uh, let's let's check my my heart rate once again. It was it was pretty high when I left to to go to the bathroom, and it, it feels fairly high now. But I guess it's I guess it's not. Okay, it's fluctuating. I'll, I'll hopefully be be showing these on the screen. Um, let's take another hot sip. Ah, okay, yikes. Okay, let's go through a little bit, a few more statistics. Here we go. So these are these are more interesting statistics. This is from Mike. FriendsCoffee.com. All right. It says they learned why people drink coffee. <clears throat> we found out why people in the USA drink coffee, and no matter how incredible it may sound, 42.9% of Americans drink coffee simply because they like the taste. This one's hard for me to believe uh, because, as I said, this uh, this bean juice is pretty gross uh, in general, but. Some people they're here for that they're here for that grossness taste you know they're here for the bitterness it makes them feel like real men I think that was what the the cowboy in the Jeff Goldblum series was saying like it's it's so tough to drink coffee it makes me feel tough when I drink it okay fair sixty four percent of Americans eighteen and older twenty nineteen said they drink a cup of drink a cup of coffee every day seventy nine percent of them drink coffee at home um so mostly my consumption of coffee happens for work so i make my cup of coffee here at home in the morning i take it to work i drink it there or i drink it on the way um to wake my ass up for the 45 minute commute um when comparing the two most popular ways of making coffee at home we found that 45 percent of people drinking coffee at home use a geyser coffee machine and 13 percent use an espresso machine the high price of espresso machines was the main determinant of the low statistic for this option my wife and I have a um, uh, uh, cake cup. The cake. Uh, what's it called? How did I forget the name? I just used it. A Keurig. <laughs> we use a Keurig machine um, that makes single serve cups of coffee. And some say it's inefficient and wasteful, but I find it to be extremely convenient. I was able to make two singular cups of coffee all for myself um, in minutes i suppose ah, i didn't put enough sugar in this one fuck me all right <clears throat> according to data 60 percent of coffee consumers in the united states visited branded coffee houses at least once a month i'm not a huge starbucks person my wife is i don't go there that often and what i do it's not even really necessarily for coffee I, i'll go and get you know a frappuccino or whatever which you can consider coffee if you want. I don't really. It's just more. It's like a smoothie to me, you know. Um, we also found that the average resident of the United States will save four hundred twenty-seven dollars per year if they drink coffee at home rather than in a coffee shop. Holy schmoly! That's kind of crazy. Is there more stats about how much we're spending? When we analyze the gender data. We found that men and women drink approximately the same amount of coffee. Men consume 1.7 cups per day on average, and women consume 1.5. We also learned that the biggest costs for coffee and coffee drinks are for the age of 25 to 34 years years old, and are about $2,008 per year. Hmm. I wonder if I should start tracking our coffee consumption and prices. My wife goes to Starbucks all the time. I know she'd be spending money there. I don't know necessarily how much, but if I start to track it, I bet I'd start getting mad. Um, <clears throat> in 2019, coffee remains an extremely popular drink among, among Americans of all ages. While high numbers of all age groups consume coffee, people around 60 and up are most likely with consumption rates of about 72% in this age group. <sighs> I had to slow down. I'm, t I'm talking myself into exhaustion. <clears throat> I'm going so fast, and I, it's really hard to control. I, I didn't think that drinking a cup and a half of coffee would uh, make me start going this fast for the podcast, but I, I guess I was extremely wrong. According to our study, 
The most popular time of day for drinking popular time of day for drinking coffee is morning. 64% of Americans who drink coffee say they most commonly consume it in the morning. Uh yeah. If I was recording this podcast at night, honestly, it's it's already kind of late. It's 11:52 p.m. or a.m., excuse me. Where I am and uh if I if I drink coffee after 3 p.m. it's a wrap. It's a wrap for my my entire night. Those days when I have to drink it to get to a comedy show, I mean, I'm awake until I get home at one or two in the morning and then I'm still kind of awake <laughs> and oftentimes I have to go to work again the next day fun stuff fun stuff for me um, do, 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 do. coffee consumption in the United States in the fiscal year of 2018 to 2019 was 26.5 million kilogram bags bags of coffee so the the bags of grinded coffee 26 million of these suckers also, Americans rate 25th among coffee consumption per capita with an indicator of 4.2 kilograms per person per year. At the same time, average Americans drink 3.1 coffee drinks per day, but this figure can increase with age. Yeah, I, I would say that my coffee consumption has increased with my age, and it's probably just going to go up from here, honestly, because now I'm starting to get addicted to the drug, the coffee drug. Um... All right, I'm getting a bit bored with these facts, but let's 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 keep going. Let's see here. Okay, let's talk about millennials. Thirty-two percent of millennials consumed an espresso-based beverage yesterday, <laughs> which is higher than any other demographic. Millennials are out here drinking the coffee. The coffee market in the USA has grown, and approximately thirty-seven thousand two hundred seventy-four coffee houses exist. The three largest chains are Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, and Caribou Coffee. They make up 78% of the total number of coffee shops in the United States. Interesting. I wonder if Caribou is more of an East Coast thing. Because I know Starbucks, I know Dunkin' Donuts, and I know, like, Pete's or whatever. But I don't, I don't think I've ever even heard of Caribou Coffee. If you have, sound off in the comments. Um, also, sound off in the comments if, uh, if you're an avid coffee drinker. If you drink it black, if you drink it unfiltered, let me know what your life is like, because it's different than mine. Um, in the U.S., there is great interest in the work of the barista. At the moment, approximately 574,000 Americans are working as baristas. That's, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. Okay. Let's, let's, let's look at this real quick, because um, I prefer to drink tea um, in terms of like getting caffeine into my system. Tea feels a lot more mellow to me. It sends me to the toilet less, and um, it tastes better, in, in, my, in my, my opinion. I like leaf juice better than bean juice, all right? And you can't, you'll never be able to switch me around. Uh, the bottom line is I like tea more. So I want to see the differences between coffee and tea, and I kind of want to know, I think, I think it had something to do with uh, the British in our, in our early, early years, back in the 1700s. Uh, and us dumping all that tea into the to the river or whatever, but like Americans, we definitely adopted coffee as our main drink of co choice over tea, which we had been bringing over from Britain, which they stole from India. And uh, uh, you know, I think once we we parted ways with them, we kind of parted ways with this particular drink as well. But let's see if I don't, I don't even know if this has any history on it. I think this is just comparing effects. Caffeine content. <coughs> Caffeine is the most studied and consumed stimulant in the world. Present in many common beverages, including coffee and tea, it's known for both its beneficial and adverse effects on human health. While the caffeine content can vary depending on brewing time, serving size, or preparation method, coffee can easily pack twice the caffeine as an equal serving of tea. Yeah, and I think why I like tea better. As much as I'm tired all the time and I want to be um, awake more when I'm drinking a stimulant, Coffee just, it's really overdoing it, I think. I, I don't need uh, this much because it's its caused me to have problems. I'm kind of starting to feel a headache come on, come on um, right over here. So let's just drink more of it and get rid of that sucker, you know what I'm saying? This is still very hot. <clears throat> the amount of caffeine considered safe for human consumption is 400 milligrams per day. One eight-ounce cup of brewed coffee contains an average of 95 milligrams of caffeine compared with 47 milligrams in the same serving of black tea. 
So I, I can drink two or three cups of tea, you know, and I would equal out to one cup of coffee, ba- or not one, but one and a half cups of coffee, like what I've had right now. And over the course of three cups of tea, it'll it'll take a much longer amount of time for me to get this keyed up like I am right now. Do you see my eyes? They won't close. I haven't blinked in seven minutes. Um, Those scientists have primarily focused on coffee when researching the positive effects of caffeine. Both drinks, despite containing different amounts of the substance, can provide its associated health benefits. Caffeine intake may reduce your risk of certain chronic diseases. Yes, yes, we've, we've, we've covered all of this. So tell me about tea. Antioxidants protect your body against free radical damage, which may help prevent the development of certain chronic diseases. Both tea and coffee are loaded with antioxidants, primarily polyphenols, which contribute to their characteristic flavor and health-promoting properties. Many groups of polyphenols are present in tea and coffee. Theoflavins, therabugins, <laughs> theru, therubigins, and catechins are the primary ones in black tea, while coffee is rich in flavonoids and chlorogenic acid. A recent test tube study discovered that theoflavins and therubigins inhibited the growth of lung and colon cancer cells and ultimately killed them. So that's coffee, right? And, oh, that's, that's tea. Studies in leukemia cells revealed similar results, suggesting that black tea may have cancer-protective properties, though more research is needed. And we already know that coffee has some cancer-protective uh, properties as well. Um, energy levels. Okay. Though tea is lower in caffeine, it's rich in L-theanine, a powerful antioxidant that also stimulates your brain. Okay. Unlike caffeine, L-theanine may provide anti-stress effects by increasing your brain's alpha waves, which help you calm down and relax. Right. Which is what my anxious ass needs more often than just a high-octane coffee, like what I'm on right now. I like because it's a much more soothing experience all around, and I'm guessing it's because of this L-theanine um, that it's got in there. This counteracts the arousing effect of caffeine and gives you a relaxed but alert mental state without feeling drowsy. Hmm. Yeah, I'm switching back to tea. I mean, I, this is this is nuts. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm going. I feel like I'm going crazy right now. Mania. Am I bipolar? We'll, we'll cover that in another episode. Possible weight loss benefits. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. Is one better than the other? Let's let's cut to the chase here. Though coffee has been associated with multiple side effects, uh such as heart failure, increased heart rate, and high blood pressure, research shows that moderate consumption is safe. Not for me. Though their antioxidant compositions differ, coffee and black tea are both excellent sources of these important compounds, which may protect against various conditions, including heart disease and some forms of cancers. Other health claims attributed to coffee include protection against Parkinson's disease and lowered risk of type 2 diabetes and liver cirrhosis. On the other hand, tea may protect against cavities, kidney stones, and arthritis. Hmm. You know, I don't want to have any of these things, so maybe I should just be keep drinking both. <sighs> or maybe I should stop them altogether and stop drinking anything. Coffee has a higher caffeine content than tea, which may be good for those looking for an instant energy fix. However, it may cause anxiety and impaired sleep insensitive people. It also might cause uh, sweaty armpits in Andre from Andre Knows Everything. <clears throat> also, due to caffeine's effect on your brain, high coffee intake may result in dependence or addiction. If you're highly sensitive to caffeine, tea may be a better choice. It contains L-theanine, an amino acid with calming properties that may relax you while keeping you alert. Moreover, you can go for a decaf option of either beverage and choose or choose herbal tea, which is naturally caffeine-free. While they won't provide the same benefits, they may offer benefits of their own. So I kind of want to focus on that addiction part. I think that's how we'll close out the episode today. All right. Caffeine. Is it addictive? People people seem to be very attached to coffee. We, we, we spend billions of dollars on it in, in the U.S. And uh, let's see what this website, uh, drugabuse.gov, this is for teens, uh, teens.drugabuse.gov. This article was written by the NIDA blog team on May 10th, 2016. It's a little old. Here we go. 
Oh, this blog post is archived and is no longer being updated. For the latest content, please visit the main Drugs and Health blog. Is this one old? Uh, let's, let's read through it. Okay. But is caffeine truly addictive? It's all about the dopamine. The world's caffeine obsession can be described as a dependency because when you have less of it, you go through a mild withdrawal with the symptoms listed above. But it is not an addiction. Okay. Okay. It is true that, like many drugs, caffeine enhances dopamine signaling in the brain. Dopamine is a chemical that helps control movement, motivation, and emotions. So enhanced dopamine signaling makes a person feel more awake and alert. Because caffeine produces that alert feeling, it's classified as a stimulant. But wait, some prescriptions. <laughs> Coffee makes it so I can't fucking talk. Um, some prescription drugs and the dangerous drug methamphetamine, you know meth, um, and MDMA, like X or Molly, are also types of sti stimulants. So what's the difference between coffee and Molly? Hmm? They're basically the same, right? While caffeine produces a small rise in dopamine, it does not cause the large surge that unbalances the reward circuits in the brain and is necessary for an addiction. So even though the word addiction is often used casually, caffeine is not scientifically addictive. Okay. Okay. So is that it? That's all that it says. So caffeine, not addictive. But let's see what this says here. Too much caffeine, like too much of anything, can still be harmful. But even if you just got to have that energy drink, know that your love of caffeine doesn't compare to a real drug addiction that can change your life forever in very bad ways. Okay. That's that's pretty good to know. Um, I think I have one more article. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so this is from the addictioncenter.com. All right. Um and this is for people who feel that they do have a chemical dependency on caffeine. Caffeine addiction. So I know what it is. Despite the similarities between caffeine dependence and other drug addictions, some healthcare officials debate as to whether it can qualify as an actual addiction. The main reason for this is that other addictive substances, such as, such as amphetamines and cocaine, stimulate the area of the brain linked to reward and motivation to a higher extent than caffeine does. Caffeine causes surges of dopamine within the brain, but is not large enough to surge to unbalance the reward system in the brain like other drugs. Because of this, the American Psychiatric Association does not currently identify caffeine addiction as a substance use disorder. However, it does recognize caffeine withdrawal as a clinical condition. The World Health Organization, who the who, uh, who we no longer associate with, um, <laughs> became the first medical corporation to formally recognize caffeine addiction as a clinical disorder in 2012. Um, so we kind of know how caffeine affects the brain. But let's read this, this paragraph here. Structurally, caffeine closely resembles a molecule that's naturally present in the brain called adenosine. So I haven't read about this in any of those other articles. Caffeine resembles the molecule so much so that it can fit neatly into the brain cell's receptors for adenosine and effectively block them off. Normally, the adenosine produced over time locks into these receptors and produces a feeling of tiredness. When caffeine molecules are blocking those receptors, they prevent this from occurring and generate a sense of alertness and energy until the caffeine is metabolized through your natural uh, body system. Like when I went to go poop a minute ago. Um, additionally, some of the brain's own natural stimulants are released, such as dopamine, and work more effectively when the adenosine receptors are blocked. The surplus of adenosine cues the adrenal glands to secrete adrenaline, another stimulant, and this further increases alertness and reduces feelings of tiredness. So not only does it block you from feeling tired, but it also increases your adrenaline, so you're <laughs> pumped up and ready to go. You can't see my legs, but they are shaking. Right, let's, let's run another... Um heart rate thing and maybe takes a couple more sips. Hmm. Ah. Signs of caffeine addiction. Okay, let's just run through these. According to the DSMV, problematic caffeine consumption is characterized by at least three of the following criteria. A persistent desire or unsuccessful efforts to cut down or control caffeine use. Continued caffeine use despite knowledge of having a persistent or recurrent psychological or physical problem that is likely to have been caused or exacerbated by caffeine. Withdrawal as manifested by either of the following. The characteristic withdrawal symptom for caffeine. 
Caffeine, or a closely related substance, is taken to relieve or avoid withdrawal symptoms. So when you start getting withdrawal headaches and you start drinking coffee to get rid of your headaches, you might be addicted to caffeine. Caffeine is often taken in larger amounts over or over a longer period than it was intended. If you're just drinking more and more and more coffee, you might have a caffeine addiction. Recurrent caffeine use resulting in a failure to fulfill major role obligations at work, school, or home. So yeah, if you are missing work because you're addicted to coffee, yeah, you, you absolutely have a have a caffeine addiction and should seek help. Continued caffeine use despite having persistent or recurrent social or interpersonal problems caused or exacerbated by the effects of caffeine. <clears throat> oh, and tolerance, as defined by either of the following. A need for markedly increased amounts of caffeine to achieve a desired effect, markedly diminished effect with continued use of the same amount of coffee. So I know my tolerance isn't that high because I'm on my second cup of coffee. I'm not even 25% of the way in. And I feel like I'm done because I'm talking all fast and I'm sweating. It's hot. And I'm not tired. I'm definitely, definitely not tired, but I feel uh, 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 weak. <laughs> um, and then finally, a great deal of time is spent in activities necessary to obtain caffeine, use caffeine, or recover from its effects, a craving, or a strong desire or urge to use caffeine. If you're feeling it, if you uh, identified with any of these because you drink coffee so much, um, maybe try to stop, maybe seek some help if you cannot uh, succeed in your attempt to stop drinking caffeine. Most experts recommend that adults should consume no more than 400 milligrams of caffeine per day. I've read that several times uh, throughout different articles in this episode. If someone is regularly drinking more than that, he or she may be at risk of negative side effects, including sleep disruption, migraines and other headaches, irritability, quick and heartbeat, muscle tremors, nauseousness, and nervousness. For some people, those side effects can kick in with even a fewer cups, Uh huh. as caffeine tolerance is highly individual. If someone has experienced side effects, has trouble controlling consumption, or feels totally out of sorts when unable to get their fix, that individual is most likely dependent on caffeine and should cut back. So, you know, be aware. Be aware of what you're doing, what you're taking in. Despite it not being truly addictive, you can develop a dependence on it, and it can apparently uh, ruin your life. Um, but if you're in the coffee business, it's not ruining yours. You know, you, you're uh, you're getting that money. the 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 money is a flowing. Uh, some symptoms of withdrawal: headache, irritability, fatigue, anxiety. Okay, and you can find treatment at um, at different centers, right? Do 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 do. Contact a dedicated treatment provider today and learn about potential treatment options. Shout out to you if you feel like you're addicted to coffee. All right. I think I'm going to close this episode out because uh, I might need to lie down or go for a run or <laughs> or something. I gotta, I'm got going to finish cleaning the house, the entire house. I'll clean the outside of the house and then then, then underneath my cars and then, then, then I'll, I'll uh, run around the block several times. I, I have enough energy to, to do everything now because I've drank two cups of coffee. Well, and this cup is is not empty. Look at that. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for listening to Andre Knows Everything. Uh, you can subscribe to this podcast on YouTube. I'm also on podcast platform podcast platforms in audio versions only. So head to iTunes, head to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, TuneIn. I think I'm on there, um, and Anchor. Anchor is a place you can go to where you can um, help support me. You can you can uh, set up a, a monthly donation if you want to. Uh, this podcast is completely free. You don't you don't feel like you have to do that. Um, but hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment down below, uh, leave a review on iTunes. All of that helps me out. Helps me get to to more ears. My name is Andre Morton. I'm a comedian. Follow me at Andre Morton Jr. Um, on Instagram and Twitter. I, I write jokes and stuff like that, and uh, make funnies, and I uh, take take pictures of, of cool things sometimes and i do other podcasts uh follow at the walt vault pod if you like uh disney movies we we review a new disney movie every week me and my wife and, and a few of our friends <coughs> and um eventually when stand-up comes back to the world i'll be doing that so check out my instagram for um for updates and shows and you can come see me live uh thank you guys so much for listening i appreciate you i love you and i know more today than I did yesterday. Bye.